Okay, welcome to part 14 of my series looking at Russ Miller's 50 Facts versus Darwinism in the textbooks. Um, I'm going to get started here. This is where I think the series is going to get really fun. Before um, I get started here, Russ, I had a there's something that's been bothering me since since the beginning of this this series, and I keep meaning to point it out, um, and I for, I I just repeatedly am forgetting. Um, I want you, I wonder if you can tell me what the hell is this? From what I can see, that looks a whole lot like a uh, classic Battlestar Galactica Cylon Centurion, um, and I'm curious, what are you doing on stage with one of those? This former Harvard professor stated, we take the side of evolutionary science because we have a prior commitment to materialism. It's their religious belief. He says, it is not that the methods of science somehow compel us to accept a material explanation. It's not the scientific facts. On the contrary, we cannot allow a divine foot in the door. It is their religious bias. It has nothing to do with the scientific evidences and facts. You are truly, truly a shameless human being, aren't you? In one of the first comment exchanges you and I had there, Solomon Rusty, uh, you were pissing and moaning about me calling you a liar, okay? Um, and I want to uh, just, I want to give you a little bit of friendly advice. Um, if you don't want me to call you a liar, Stop fucking lying, you fucking doucheburger, okay? You, okay, let's, let's, let's get right on. Let's just jump into this Luwantan quote here. It, 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 it pissed me off. It seriously pissed me off. Um, again, I have that article. Um, it's also available to view online, and I will put a link down below so that my viewers can see what Luwantan actually wrote compared to your fucked up version that you presented. Um, and again, you... It, do you think it's okay? Uh, you added the word in parentheses evolutionary uh, to it I, ev to make it evolutionary science, um, which he wasn't discussing, by the way. That wasn't what the article was about. I mean, evolution is mentioned in the article and such, but that's not what the article, the focus of the article, that's not what Lewontin was talking about. Okay. Um, and, of course, your, your, again, your ellipses, your, your removing keywords and ellipses to change the meaning as typical. Uh, so you took what he actually wrote, and I'm going to get into some detail about this, and you turned it into a, um, we only accept evolution because we, we just can't believe in God, as if he's admitting some deep, dark secret. And that's not what he meant. And you know that's not what he meant. That's what, re that's what makes you just the fuckwit that you are. Okay, can you see that? If I recall correctly uh, from the days when I would would study the Bible, uh, there was a commandment, uh, I believe it was number nine, um, about false witness, uh, which, which you know, when you're taking somebody's words and you're changing their meaning and then claiming that that person's saying something that they never intended to say uh, to support your viewpoint, uh, that's false witness there. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how you justify it, okay? I know I know you, how you justify it. You justify it because it gets the fucking donation plate coming in, right? That that That's, again, your primary goal, you fuckwit. Okay, the Lewontin quote. That is from a, a book review. Um, Richard Lewontin did a book review of Carl Sagan's A Demon Haunted World, okay? Which is an excellent book, by the way. I uh, highly recommend it. Uh, Lewontin, however, disagrees with some of the points that Sagan does. Um, it, not because he disagrees with science, not because he thinks that God should be part of it or anything like that at all. Lewontin is a committed atheist in, in the same way that, that Sagan was and everything like that. I had nothing to do with it. Um, the, the main portion, the main point of that book review was Lewontin disagreed with, he believed that Sagan had almost a naive viewpoint that 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 sort of the lay public were just sort of empty vessels waiting to be filled with scientific knowledge that that by 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 you know presenting the material cosmos and such by presenting this material um that as soon as somebody hears it they were going to say oh wow that that so science is the real answer and get rid of all of their mythologies okay and Sagan sort of took that viewpoint that approach to it that but that by providing this material he was sort of bettering people 
And Lewontin took the viewpoint, or it was, was sort of disagreeing with that, not with the overall point of it, but disagreeing with the idea um, that people's mythologies were so easily undone. And that's what that quote is about, okay? The quote is referring to the fact that um, when you're, you know, when you're presenting science to somebody, uh, a person with little or no scientific background, um, and you're telling them about these things, you're saying, you know, we just saw this galaxy a hundred million light years away, that that reality means as little to them or as much to them as, you know, a, 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 an immortal supernatural being is uh, is speaking to me. If that makes sense. Um, basically, the the stories that scientists say have no more reality to the to somebody without the scientific background as do any other, uh, whether it be Bible stories or whatever religious stories they were raised with. And so science is kind of losing that battle. And in Lewontin's view, um, he s states that scientists themselves are mostly ignorant of how the public really perceives the these things. Um, that that, that for, the most, for most people, they're accepting these scientific facts on faith, um, if they accept them at all. And, and that, you know, the, that... Anyway, that's the point that that quote, that's what that quote is about. It's not about evolutionary science and it's not about not letting a divine foot in the door. That was a point he's making about the scientific method. Again, read the article. You guys, read, read it yourself um, and, and you'll see why Russ is full of shit. And they show these evolutionary trees of life and at the base they have our supposed invertebrate ancestor. Notice how they have the word invertebrate ancestor. They don't show what it is. It's because they don't have the slightest idea what that would be. And then they show these nice, colorful lines connecting everything on Earth together. Is that how you prove Darwinism? You take a box of crayons and you color lines connecting things together? That's really the best proof that they can come up with? Hmm, interesting. Yes, Russ, it actually is very interesting, believe it or not. And you know what? The suggestion that we just draw take crayons and draw colored lines and that's 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 the actual effort we put into uh researching the evolutionary history of life and you think that that's that's all we do um you know what fuck you you fucking idiot okay we spend those of us who actually work in the biological sciences we spend years of our lives we take time out of our family we take time away from friends and recreational activities doing this kind of research all right and for you to dismiss it makes up clever little fucking joke about crayons so you can get a laugh out of your ignorant, inbred audience. Fuck you. And they claim that Archaeopteryx is a missing link between reptile and bird. I thought they had given up on this 20 years ago, but they put it back into the books. And why exactly do you think that Archaeopteryx was removed from the lineage from reptiles to birds 20 years ago? Why would you think that, Russ? Because it certainly doesn't, it's not reflected in any scientific publication. Oh, because your fucking creatard sources say it was? Yeah, you know what? Here's, a, here's, a, here's another hint for you. Um, we scientists don't use um, your made-up bullshit sources as, as, as evidence for um, what we study, okay? Have you been taught the, uh, that Archaeopteryx is the missing link between reptiles and birds before? They say, well, Archaeopteryx was the size of a pigeon and had claws on its wing. And they say that proves it was a reptile becoming a bird. They don't point out that the Hoitzen, who lives in South America today, is about the size of a pigeon and has claws on its wings and is about the size of a pigeon. And nobody claims it's a missing link. That could be Archaeopteryx for all I know. <laughs> You'll really repeat anything you fucking hear, won't you, moron? Um, a Hudson the size of a pigeon? Really? Really, Russ? A Hudson? Um, you know, do you recognize that, 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 uh, the Hoatzin, um, is, is like 26 inches long? Um, you know, that, that's a pretty big ass pigeon, don't you think? Um, I don't know, uh, how they are in Phoenix, Arizona, but pigeons, uh, generally don't get you know, they, they don't exceed uh, uh, two feet long um, in our part of the world. Um, and second of all, the Hawatsin chicks have claws that stick out of their, that extend from the wing. Claws. All right. You're comparing that to Archaeopteryx that had fingers, like articulated fingers extending from its wing. It's not the same thing, you dumb shit. And, of course, you're, you're ignoring the 80-plus characteristics that Archaeopteryx has that no bird has. 
um, traits that are only found in, guess what? The mana reptile and dinosaurs. But here's a bigger problem for the Darwinian tale. Keep in mind, they say the strata layers form slowly over millions of years, so the lower in the strata layer, the older something should be. Well, scientists back in 1986 found modern bird fossils in the layer below Archaeopteryx. So if modern birds were there before Archaeopteryx, he couldn't be a missing link. He was just a bird, a perching bird. Prime example of your level of hypocrisy. Okay, so you spend a great part, we'll, we'll get to it later on, a good part of your talks um, blame, accusing scientists of, of, of hanging all this evidence on these tiny scraps of bone and stuff, right? Um, and, and you laugh about it and ha ha ha, isn't that funny how stupid we all are? But, Proto-Avis, do you know that Proto-Avis is based on um, a very, very damaged, fragmentary pieces of skeleton that for the, ma the majority of people who actually study birds and study rep uh, dinosaurs don't even think they're from the same species, okay? There's very few scientists that think they even represent, the, the fragments of bone are from the same species. Um, but no matter what the truth may be, there's not enough fragments for us to make hardly any anything. All we can tell is that it's a diapsid. But then so are snakes and lizards and dinosaurs and birds are all diapsids as well. That's, that's about as close as we can actually get to classifying these damaged pieces of bone. Okay, but from that, you're willing to say it's a perfectly modern bird? You're, 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 you are, you, because you want there to be a perfectly modern bird before Archaeopteryx, you're going to take these scraps of bone and say, look, this is brilliant scientific evidence proving my point. You're a hypocrite. So have you heard, Russ? Have you heard? Everybody's heard about the bird. And here's a real dagger through this fairy tale of Darwinism. Reptile DNA, it doesn't contain the genetic information of form feathers, which are very complex structures. The DNA code barrier, gene depletion, science knows of no way for nature to have added that type of information. <laughs> Reptile DNA does not contain the information to make feathers? Um, first of all, dumb fuck. Have you looked? Just, just out of curiosity, um, how many, how many reptile DNA sequences have you been combing through uh, <laughs> to, to know that? Um, to the best of my knowledge, there's, there's, there's precious few scientific articles that even that would cover that. It doesn't even make sense. Okay, all right, I'm going to use one of my analogies here. Uh, my fourth grade son, um, I, I, I would hope is someday going to learn calculus. Someday is going to be studying calculus, hopefully, maybe in high school, maybe in college, but he will be studying calculus. Um, but in order to test that hypothesis, I, I, tried, I, I gave him a quiz, um, asking him to you know do some really, really simple, simple uh, calculus equations. Um, and he doesn't even seem to know what the words mean. He doesn't even seem to know what, 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 question, what the questions I'm asking him mean. Um, so I think I've disproved that he's ever going to learn calculus because um, he, he doesn't know any, anything about it now. Um, and I would expect that he would have that calculus knowledge already present in his brain, right? In fact, this fellow from the British Museum of Natural History, and they have the largest fossil collection in the world, stated, there is no fossil evidence of the remarkable change from reptile to bird. There is no evidence of this taking place. You quote Swinton. You you quoted W. E. Swinton on there's no no fossil evidence for the change between what he's talking about. By the way, is between theropod dinosaurs and Archaeopteryx. Um, okay, that that's what that quote is about. Um, but first of all, there, Russ, uh, way to keep current on sources. You know that he wrote that uh, fifty years ago. Just so you know, nineteen sixty one. Um, so a quote from 1961, before we discovered any of the feathered dinosaurs, um, before we had really, really good skeletons of these Manoraptorans and large diversity of these Manoraptorans, and, and all of that. Um, so, so tell me how that quote's relevant. Tell me how that quote proves anything. Do you, do you think that the study of fossil birds stopped 50 years ago, and we just haven't even bothered looking since then? Do you, do you think that once Swinton made that proclamation, we just quit trying? 